Yeah, he sets my body in motion He just, he knows how to turn things up And he knows what gets me going Hey loves and welcome back to my channel and welcome a very special guest. Today we have Tapiwa, popularly known as VJ from Studio 263. Hi Tapiwa. Hello Welcome to my channel. Oh thanks, thanks for having me. You're welcome. Could you give us a brief of your works? Perhaps I'll just start with um, my first encounter with this whole thing. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, my first encounter with television, actually. Um, I had, it was back in 2003. I took an audition for a sitcom. This sitcom was being produced by an NGO. This NGO was based at the university. At that time, I was a student at the university. Mm -hmm. So it was easy for me to catch on upon the auditions and then I, and I went for it and I got a role in this. And um, yeah, we started filming that uh, sitcom. It was a television series in uh, 2003. I was a student at UZ then. That was actually my very first um, performance in front of a TV camera. But yeah, I, you know, I, I worked with interesting characters in the crew. A lot of the guys I worked with in the crew there are still active very much in the industry today. I think that's the time that I met I was with Munyashi Zonga mm -hmm. at that time, yes. We were still very young, you know, we were all students. I think he was high school, I just first year of university. We were, that's when I met him and we were doing this film thing. We were both very excited about it. Unfortunately, it fell through. But it then gave birth to my break at 260. Mm -hmm. But as far as performances go, mm -hmm. um, I had been performing much earlier than since the time I was in school, for, uh, on stage. Okay. Yeah. So, from that's basically the background of uh, how we started, I can say, my breaking. My break then followed the following year, 2004, but I started actually in 2003. Okay. So, this sitcom you're referring to is. You know, it's been such a long time. Um, <laughs> I barely remember the name, but I can tell you this. Uh, when we did that sitcom in 2003, it was... Uh, the guy who was directing that, uh, Sam Rengai, he my director then. It's unfortunate that, that the project fell through, so it didn't come through. We only filmed a few episodes and then it fell through for mm -hmm. various reasons. But after that, I, I then met uh, the director who was directing that project. I happened to be a lecturer at the university at that time. So I met with him the following year in 2004. So he's the one who then told me about uh, 263, there being auditions out there. And like, so, yeah, I always like referring to that very first project because then it led me to my brain. I see. Okay. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And after 263? Mm, after 263, um, 263 was like an introduction to like me in like the public domain, mm -hmm. uh, television-wise. Something that I really hadn't prepared for, really. 263 was a really big shot for me. I was quite young. So everything was a wow for me. I like, yeah. Yeah, I enjoyed working on that. Uh, since then, I got the attention of other producers. Mm -hmm. So they all went. I was under contract, mainly in 263, so I couldn't like, uh, not respond in the way that they would like. Mm -hmm. Especially since I was still new. Yeah, but eventually, as I pushed with 263, yeah, I got, uh, I got a, an, other few contracts here and there. Uh, a lot of uh, film. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, people were making a lot of movies now. They were beginning to, uh, almost as if to follow the Nigerian trend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I was involved in film production since that time. I remember my very first ever feature film. Uh, 
was just a year after I'd engaged with 263. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this one's called No Matter What. <laughs> uh, exciting times, I just, you know, I enjoyed working on that one also, because it was like, um, this was exciting, the storyline, even the characters playing, the level I was at that time in my life, and everything that was going on, it was new and exciting. So I worked on that since then. Um, worked on a few more. I remember we did a bit of a collaboration with the Nigerians at some point. Mm -hmm. We did a project called uh, The Zimbabwe I Know. That was also exciting. Um, uh, working on working on that project. Um, the success of it as well, debatable. But as, as far as I'm concerned, I was just I was. I was drawn to the project because I felt it would be a good thing to uh, link up and work with these guys. Mm -hmm. And we actually did. And for me, that's well, that was what it was worth. So I backed that one as well. And then did a few more. I remember a time when ZBC actually produced a feature film, which was not a television series. I was a part of that. It's called Thicker Than Blood. It was to be in, um, I think, 2007. It was also an exciting point to be working there. Um, then from there, cinema-wise, film-wise, uh, we then worked on uh, Gringo, the Troublemaker. That was uh, 2012, but released in 2013. Yeah. Until today, I think uh, Gringo stuck in people's memories yeah. It's one of my most exciting projects actually. Yeah. Also television. There was a point when I did uh, numerous projects with ABC. Mm -hmm. I worked with one like uh, Akanga Nimo, Alangarara. Mm -hmm. I worked with um, them at uh, Usasana Unopara. I mentioned these two particularly because they are, they are adapted from books. Uh, Shona books that are written by local authors. Uh, in the past, but we still have some of those authors alive, and yeah, I just thought it was I studied some of those books in high school. I did too. You know, so mm -hmm. it was very interesting for me to be a part of um, depicting that kind of a thing, especially at that level, uh, presenting it locally. Yeah, I think it was okay adaptations of books. In fact, it gave it gave me a few ideas of myself. Um, what I see myself doing in the future will be writing and directing. And then how I'm going to get there is going to include things like uh, book adaptations and things like that. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think it was a brilliant thing to, to work with. So yeah, with ZBC, I mainly did those. So they were formatted into a series. Um, those books, I enjoyed working with them there. And I was trying to get as much work in as I could. Yeah. Okay, you mentioned something very interesting, contracts. How do you feel about contracts? in Zimbabwe film industry, especially for the performer or the artist? Well, I guess it depends deep? on the contract, <laughs> doesn't it? You know, what I actually learned uh, with time, uh, contracts have to exist. Uh, I remember people that make film, they follow some procedures. Mm -hmm. Yes. So these countries, they have to exist for people that you work with every day. Anyway. That's one thing. And well, the other thing is, how much meaning do these contracts have? Right. You know, when you ask me about contracts, I don't know if you're asking about what they contain in terms of the remuneration package, the packages themselves, or in terms of the theory of dealing with contracts. Well, my angle was mostly what you said. Um, you were under one contract and yeah. you had several different opportunities. Yeah. And you couldn't exactly take them because of the current contract you had signed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm thinking of it more from that perspective. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Now, so from that angle, then, yeah, it's as binding as any contract. Mm -hmm. It's something that you agreed to. Mm -hmm. So that's what I had agreed to. So sometimes these contracts they make sense because what you're actually working on 
is making sense as well. Okay. So you would uh, feel free being bound by the contract because you know what you're doing there, uh, what you're producing there also. So at that time, it was quite easy for me working with 263. If somebody now wants to engage me for an Amber Heard mm-hmm. or if I do a film on the side of it, I can do that. Because of the the project you were working on. Because of the project I'm working yeah. on. Yeah. And the contract itself, the mm-hmm. reason why I didn't sign that contract is because I said, no, this stuff is Making is sense. okay for me right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Things may have changed in the future, but at that time, yes, that's what a contract meant to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, how did you know that acting was your thing? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I guess it's because I just... I know it happened from the first time I tried it. That's what I knew. Because since that time, I tried it again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, I kept doing it. And I found myself just doing it again and again. <laughs> so, and I enjoyed it. You know, until... It came to a point where people that I work with sometimes, they would then tip you off. You know, this might be your kind of thing. Mm. You know, relatives and friends sometimes. Oh, you know, you've been in this. This might be your kind of thing. You know, you can't do this. And I'm, at that time, I'm just more curious. You know? It just happened that I'll, I'll just do it again. So that's when I saw that. I'm going to be into this kind of thing. So, um, interesting that you mentioned family. How did your family take to you going down this career path? Yeah, I, um, well, yeah, they, they reacted. You know, and if you're asking for the first artist in my family, then yes. That being the case also. But the thing is, here's the thing, it's something that, like I said, I would just find on myself doing again and again. So initially, my parents, um, they were not really sure about how to feel about it. Uh, probably thought, it was probably thought that, you know, this is, this is something that's just going to draw unnecessary attention mm-hmm. towards me. Uh, with no particular end, it's a means to what end to them, they might have asked, you know. I saw that, yeah, with my parents initially. But you know, as it goes, um, and as I was growing older, it's something that they grew to accept. I guess when you're good at what you do, uh, people warm up to the idea. Because definitely, um, <laughs> I'm not surprised you have to ask that question. Um, I'm sure um, with a lot of people in art, uh, uh, this particular kind of industry that we are in, in Africa, yeah. and the way that people were raised, mm-hmm. even the generations before us, mm-hmm. uh, the things that they, they actually uh, focus on in life to be good for a person in life. All of that makes sense, you know. Um, but, you know, it's a journey. For me, like art, for me, everything has been a journey. Uh, a lot of the stuff I didn't quite anticipate. But when it did happen, but because I was already just doing this and already just prefer, preferring it, then it's something that I now I have to live with this now. Bring it. I know this is going to come in this kind of way to somebody else now. You know, I'm going to end up doing it again, so here we are. <laughs> okay, so what was your most challenging role, and how did it sharpen your skills? Yeah, uh, well, most challenging role. I have since taken up more challenging roles in life. But in film, I'd say um, the most challenging role wasn't even film related, it was actually a theater production. I was I was working with Rooftop Productions, uh, David Gugier was directing this play, and it was written by Stephen Chifonisi. We were doing a very good on that project. Um, 
I, I was drawn to that because I've been almost eight years in doing film and television and the like. So I saw it as a challenge in itself uh, and an opportunity to, uh, you know, it's a platform to perform. So I got the chance to perform on this live stage. And well, it turned out well, but you know, it was quite challenging. I knew it was going to be a challenge, that's why I did it. And I really felt that, um, but I'm still glad I did it. So I'd say that was the most the most challenging role that I had, I've had to do uh, performance-wise. Okay. Like going back on stage, the last time I'd been on stage was like in, in school. You know? and, but this time it was like a serious theater here. Yeah. So I did that, I enjoyed it. It was a real challenge, but I simply then resolved uh, not to do it again. <laughs> and okay. I stuck with film and everything else. Do you have any film <clears throat> or film related education that you've acquired? I did actually. This was now mostly out of curiosity. A lot of the work that I had done initially when I started at the university, I was studying something totally different. I was uh, in the psychology department. But since I was now moving so much with film, especially after 263, mm-hmm. I became more curious and everything. Uh, I put in a lot of work on set, uh, getting different characters, getting to different uh, projects and, and um, films um, as a performer. But during that time, I started uh, becoming more cute because being on set and everything, sometimes I'd find myself hungry as a performer, uh, having to act some, something. It's already written on the script by somebody else. Mm-hmm. But now, as I'm performing, sometimes when I'm in character, I feel like I'm, I need to put in a little bit more or I feel like this wasn't even necessary to even be there. Uh, you see, now you are now directing <laughs> somebody else's work. And then, you know, as you grow, in the industry or in the art, you then realize, oh no, well, I may as well then just write something or may as well then direct something and things like that. Uh, where my talent will lead me. I'm just happy that it's all in the same. So as a solution to that, I decided to, that's how I decided to enroll for film school. I needed to consolidate everything that I was learning uh, from being set and from when I started with actual rules that are on the ground with regards to filmmaking, even the basic ones, even just to give me enough confidence to then move on and say, you know what, I've seen what it's like on the set. I've, I've been in the classroom, they teach this, they teach that. So there's no, uh, there's this clarity of things and then I can just move on with it. And, you know, yeah, it's good to get the paper, you know. It, is, it's a, it was just a certificate, a national certificate. But, I think it clarified a lot of things in terms of how I'm going to be moving with my work. So what do you see yourself doing in the future? Okay, my plan is really, um, you know, with art, with the way I've been treating it in my life, um, I haven't made any solid plans. Well, this could be a solid plan, actually, but it's, it's a transformation that I'm in the middle of. I'm trying to move from where I've put in so much work uh, being a performer, trying to get, uh, gain my ground locally, which is practically what I was working on. Um, seeing that I, I live here in, in Africa and I've got other things to take care of. Yes, I, was, I, I, I like uh, the position that I put myself in this in the, in the industry. So, in terms of the future, um, I now see myself taking a, a, a bigger role where I do not, I do not have to wait to perform in somebody else's story um, or be stuck with somebody else's story to work on, but I can now uh, start creating stories of my own. This is based on experience I've gathered all this time that I've been performing. Stuff that I tried to consolidate through going to a film school to make sure that if I'm going to decide then to say, you know what, I'm going to sit and start creating for myself. 
and then I'm going to start getting people on board to help me out to come up with some stuff. Um, I guess that is basically the vision. But being art to me, I treat it as art as well. I don't treat it like a deal where I have to rush in your uh, deadlines or whatnot. Things as they are going to come to me um, as long as I'm mm, taking it down. If I'm going to be creating something, you know, I want it to be like really coming out from somewhere where it's going to have, actually have meaning. It's, 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 it's one thing to uh, be out there and just be doing stuff like at the same place, mm -hmm. if you get what I mean. So I'm at that level where in life I'm like, no, I don't need to move this art so that I can feed my children right now. I need to move this art because we, we make art. The art is alive in Africa. It's alive in Zimbabwe. It has a pulse right now. It's not Hollywood. It's not uh, Bollywood or anything like that. But we have people who make film, who do television for their local entertainment and things like that. And this is the state where I am, where I'm appreciated to be part of that and then be able to uh, take care of my life at the same time, even when the industry doesn't seem to be um, commercial like that, where it can actually take care of an individual needs. Sometimes it's not always about that, but then the art, if it's alive and alive in you, then that's the thing. Uh, anytime I get a chance to express that, I will. But then now as I'm growing, and as I've grown in the art, I realize, no, yeah, as I said, I don't need to uh, perform for anybody. I could create stories by myself, you know, show them to people, get people to perform on them. Even still, I could, I will continue being a performer. Push some uh, writers and directors out there to come up with, you know, good stories, better stories. And then I can continuously engage as a performer because that's how it started. Speaking of, how do you see the future of this industry locally you know the way i feel about this industry really yeah it's um you know that question the future will always be there for the industry because uh people who need who manage to maintain it as a cult film as a cult mm -hmm. another place is it it generates so much revenue in other places, it changes a lot. In other places, it moves people's uh, thought process and things like that. But generally, if it's nothing else, it's alive, you know, in here in this country, here is where we are. And there's a lot of people who are pushing it. And to me, that's a future in itself. It's not something that's dead, you know. It just takes the eye that's going to go there and see where it is. You know, our film industry might not might not see the, the light of Hollywood or anything that is commercial, commercially available, which it is starting to anyway, mm -hmm. uh, as you can see in the future, yes. But even without that, I'm saying as long as it's alive and people are making it, uh, producing stuff, mm -hmm. yes, they should on the local level and we, we should, we should just keep pushing it because yes, it's not that easy for your stuff to be just mainstream. But as long as your industry is the pulse, say no. Go to Japan, go to Sri Lanka, go to places you can't even imagine. Mm -hmm. Places that are not even common like Hollywood. They record films. Mm -hmm. They have this thing that's going on in life. To me, that is good. That is the future. Every film is not supposed to be in a certain way. Artists are no answer. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But if you go somewhere, if you want to see Zen film, you will see Zen film television and you will learn more, uh, about their culture through that. And then if you want something more commercial, more blockbuster, there is stuff that's there. Mm -hmm. And then if you want stuff for Netflix and stuff that's really entertainment and things, there is stuff like that. So if we're going to have our culture then growing into places like Netflix and places like Hollywood, oh, that's a big place. But it can't die because of that. It's a culture. It's just alive. It's just that it's more alive in other areas than not. Mm -hmm. And for those who are burning with this desire, it's easy. People will what? float and go to the places where it... I'll give an example of my friend Arnold Tongai. He's in Hollywood in Los Angeles right now. Yes, he had to lift himself up to go where that kind of action happened. Because 
that kind of action might not come this way. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's what I was saying. I'm happy with the approach that I take in that one. Okay, fine. I'm around for whatever circumstance. But it's because the art is there also. And I'm taking part in participating. I made a name for myself. I guess we wait for whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So that's the idea we... Uh, well, that's what I appreciate about art. That's what I, I envision it as. It's not a pressure. It's a way of life. It's just, you know, if you're carving a rock, you're just gonna have no deadline. The time you imagine something, you go touch it up, uh, leave it. If it's painting, you're gonna go brush it a little, a few strokes, leave it for next time and things like that. And then, you, for me, I'm happier that way. It's it's not a pressure to say no. This is a, we need food on the table. We need no no no. I'm also trying to go, then have to find other means and everything if you want to keep the art alive and live the way you want it to be. And that's how it goes. So what would you say was the highlight of your career? I was in South Africa once. I managed to work on a film set for a project. It was for the Homer channel called Wild at Heart, the TV series. Well, I was exposed to things in like a big way, mm. you know. So, so the, one of the most exciting times of my life in terms of uh, film and television. I, I, I just saw, you know, the way, the, you know, the way they were, they were creating this, this thing it was an episode that I was taking part in. And I had, I just happened to be a part of it and I saw equipment and uh, ways of operation that I had never seen before. It was only more encouraging than anything. It was quite something. What was your favorite role and why? Well, today, definitely until this day, my favorite role was John in Gringo Trouble. <laughs> it's a very interesting character. I mean, it was a comedy. Uh, I, I like the fact that uh, Enoch, the writer, and the producer, Lillian, God rest her soul, um, they uh, actually pinpointed me for this role and, like, you know, for something like this, we need a character like this, and we, we think you, you can bring it home. It was against the usual stereotypical role that I've been playing and everything, and since it was a comedy, yeah, it was actually a bit of a challenge, but the, the fact that I was enjoying it so much, even um, the production crew that I worked with then, I was very familiar, I'd worked before with everybody there. Okay. And it was a very sweet, solid agreement, um, a good working environment for me. I, I, I really enjoyed working there. Yeah. Inok writes comedy uh, from comedy strips. That's mm -hmm. uh, where the character Gringo came to life. And he became legendary locally. Mm -hmm. People enjoyed his show. So when these guys decided to come up with a, an actual feature film based on that series, uh, you know, those are the kind of opportunities that I'm into, the kind of challenges that I like. Something between something very different. If I'm going to work on a film that was based on a book, if I'm going to work in theater just to have curiosity, if I'm going to work with other guys who've been in, in, in the industry working on a feature, you know, I, I, I thought it was a, a good place to be in. And I really enjoyed it. It was it was it was very good actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I enjoyed it a lot. There are a lot of acting hopefuls. What would your advice be to them? Okay, yeah, there are actually um, a lot of potential, like I said earlier, uh, in terms of art uh, in this field. A lot of people are coming out. That whole generational uh, crisis seems to be fading away. It's something that's becoming more acceptable. So for the upcoming artists and everyone, um, the path is actually maybe not easy, but really not the way it used to be. Uh, it's a movement. It really wasn't the way it was before. Where when you ask me about how you have to feel about something, but right now we are in a generation where uh, some of the parents, a lot of the parents right now, are actually artists. Mm -hmm. You know, so for the future. Uh, filmmakers in the industry, it's, it's, a, it's a good place to be. What you just need to do is really identify the, the section 
or the actual direction you want your partners, because this is something that's serious, it's, it's quite big. People uh, can pursue this to great lengths, you know, to the commercial level, to the Hollywood level, and then people can uh, keep it alive, whichever place you are. As long as you're making the film, you're creating the art, you have to have a good story, or you have to uh, feel good about expressing a certain story. I think that's where it's all. That's where it all lies. Mm -hmm. every, every anything else will find you as you are doing that, as you are being expressive, as you are being involved. So to a few, uh, you know, upcoming and already established, the idea is to just continue putting in that work, uh, enjoy the art. Art is uh, creating. That's what you have to enjoy about it. The other nitty gritties uh, they come into play. You know, when you mention contracts, even in successful film industries, they didn't start with that. Mm -hmm. Even the successful projects, they're not necessarily big projects, budgets and everything. It's mostly networking. How people get along to come up together and produce and depict a certain story. So as long as people can do that, contracts and whatever else, it's really external. But if you love art internally, you can survive there because the art is alive as a culture. If you want to pursue art uh, to make a lot of money, to pursue it as a way of living and everything much further, there are places that can actually do it. So yeah. It's, it's art, it will always be alive and those uh, upcoming and uh, interested in it just have to realize uh, what it is they actually interested in about the whole thing so they can actually pursue it more what they actually want. See? So yeah, that's for me, true art is just there, it's everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of places, everywhere you go, it will be there. People will be making films and TV. If you want to be a local, it's still a good thing, because locally there's still good stories that need to be told, mm -hmm. and, and all of that. So the passion and the art should uh, drive the, the person and nothing else. I'm going to move to the more personal questions. You said you're the first to become an artist, but how many are you in your family? I have four brothers, and I also have two sisters. So those are all my siblings. Okay. And then there's the parents as well. In that mix, I'm on number five. So the two young boys behind me. Not and exactly the middle child, but... Not really, yeah, but somewhere in the mix. Yeah, yeah. okay. Mm. Yeah, so that's the family structure. And do you have a family of your own? I do. God bless me, I, I raised a family, a beautiful family. Um, uh, I've got three boys and a lovely wife. I have had to take the role of a father and also in life. It's a time for that. I, I appreciate that. It all comes with the growth. It's part of the package. I can't imagine myself not having a family right now. To me, it's more like a blessing. I have that. It's beautiful. Okay, so... The last question, what is your favorite holiday destination, both locally and internationally, or regionally? Well, locally, definitely, it has to be Zambezi, mm -hmm. Kashmir. Anywhere along the Zambezi, anywhere along the Zambezi. I love, I love safari, I love, love, love doors, I love that. No, internationally, well, oh, I would start anyway, really. The trip to Rome or even Paris or London or Morocco, Casablanca, mm. you know, Mexico, mm -hmm. Espana, mm -hmm. you know, all of these places are all a mystery to me. Jerusalem, everywhere. It's like, yeah, those are my dream places. I, I, I can't say they're my favorites. I haven't been to. You know, but then maybe locally I'd say some busy guys. But I'd go to the Caribbean. I would go to Rome. I would enjoy España. I would enjoy uh, uh, Casablanca. I would enjoy traveling. Yeah. Regionally, 
Well, being to Cape Town, I love that. Mm -hmm. I love the way they established the place. It's, it's, it's really nicely built. And the parts that I've been, I love that ocean in front. Uh, Namibia, when I enjoy Namibia, because there's an ocean front, there's also a desert. So you don't enjoy the whole world at the same time. So that brings us to the end of this interview. Is there anything you would like to share that you would want to express that I didn't ask? No, not really. I just want to thank you for your time and everybody that's been watching. Um, it's been great uh, chilling with you. Like I said before, you know, um, uh, future-wise, I'm, I'm happy for the position that I've managed to acquire for myself here in, in Zimbabwe. I'm, I'm practically ready for the next step, um, which I'm also working on. I haven't been training and meditating all this time for nothing. So I want to say, yeah, I'm still in the industry. Still got our foot in there, hoping for the best. Um, the good thing is, uh, I know where I'm, where I'm standing, and I'm looking forward to, you know, uh, broadening my spectrum in film. Like I told you, I mentioned getting into writing and directing. I think that's going to be really exciting for me. Like actually getting into something, giving it the style that I would prefer to have, and things like that. I'm not sure if people are going to like it. But, you know, the sooner I get started, uh, the better, so that I get all the bad stuff out of the way to make way for the good stuff. Thank you, Tapia, for joining me on my channel. Thank you for giving us an insight into the industry and giving all the creators out there hope. I think the most important thing that I have gotten from this interview is that if you have a passion for the art, and if we continue to work towards that, that culture will never die. I think of all the things, that's the most important thing because like you mentioned, everywhere you go, there's always something being created. Definitely. And if we can share that culture with other people, that's... That's the, that's the yeah, that's the industry. It's always alive in a certain extent, and then there, it can go further. But then you need to go to that place where that where it's not going to happen. Uh, build it from this side, from where you are. Mm -hmm. You know, you can always go and tell a European story, or tell an American story by being there. Mm -hmm. That stories have to be told here also locally. I also, until the time we come up with a good story. Then we'll also be able to do things, but that can only happen as long as the industry is alive as a culture. I'm sure he'd like to know your insight, your input, and like he said, he's going to be looking for people to also perform in his work. So, where can we find you, or where can they find you? What are your social media handles? Okay, Dre, now that's an uh, interesting point. I know I haven't been very active on that stuff, but really, if you're going to go, Tapiwa mm Malindidze, -hmm. that's your uh, Gmail. Mm -hmm. Is that Tapiwa uh, Malindidze? My Twitter handle is that Tapiwa Malindidze. Facebook is Tapiwa Malindidze. Okay. You'll be able to find me. Just Google Tapiwa Malindidze. Perfect. So, Again, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next Sunday. Don't forget to comment, like and subscribe. Thanks, so.